let's move on to the distribution process. The following animation shows how the asphalt is laid with our new compact asphalt paver and feeder. Firstly, the feeder machine fills the binder hopper. Here the binder is coloured green. Then the feeder changes its position and transports the wearing course material to the upper hopper on the paver and fills it. This material is coloured red. Now the top two asphalt layers can be laid in one work process, continuously hot on hot. Let's have a look now at how the compact asphalt machine is built. Here we can see how the first module, a binder container expanded to 45 tons, is connected to the carrying basic unit, the F300 CS paver. The binder container is a self-supporting design. The paver is then connected to the second module, the AM300, which consists of a second storage container with a capacity of 25 tonnes for the wearing course material. Two feeder augers, chute and the second screed. To connect the AM300, the paver drives backwards into this module and locks it in. The design of the compact asphalt makes it easy to transport from one site to another. Let's see how the compact asphalt works in practice, together with the mobile feeder, the MF300C. We're looking here at a country road in northern Germany. The working width is 6 metres. A binder material, 022S with a thickness of 10 centimetres, and a wearing course material, SMA011S, with a thickness of 2 centimetres, both with a polymer-modified bitumen, are being processed. The green lamp on the mobile feeder signals that binder material is needed in the binder container, which is almost twice the size of the wearing course container. This is due to the thickness of the binder layer. The lorry with binder material docks and empties its asphalt mix into the feeder hopper. The conveyor belt of the feeder transports the material into the binder container of the compact asphalt. With the Dynapack feeder, 27 tonnes of material can be carried in a paver hopper in 35 seconds, a very good performance and a necessary guarantee for continuous paving. The binder material is laid with the first high compaction screed. The screed used here is a proven serial component. With a thickness of 10 centimetres and 2 centimetres, the light normally switches to red after the fifth binder has been filled. The wearing course mix is now required. The mobile feeder pauses briefly, raises its conveyor to the upper position as the paver continues forward. After a short cleaning period, about 20 seconds, the feeder is in position and the wearing course material fills the upper container. The hopper augers feed the distributing chutes with wearing course mix, which is then conveyed to the second screed. The wearing course mix is then pre-compacted on the hot binder layer, hot on hot. This guarantees the best possible interlocking and bonding of the layer. In contrast to the conventional method in which the wearing course is paved on a cold base layer, the hot asphalt course used here increases the compacting time for the subsequent rolling process. 
Roads on which the compact asphalt construction method has been used will certainly meet the transport demands of today and tomorrow. These roads will be distinguished by their extreme wearing stability and even surfaces. Compact asphalt can be laid without problem even in the cooler months of the year, thanks to the residual heat in the asphalt binder. Using compact asphalt with a 10 cm binder and 2 cm wearing course can extend the time available for compaction by as much as 5 times. A 50 degree loss of temperature in 90 minutes, a 30 degree loss of temperature in 30 minutes is still always a very good result. Thin asphalt layers such as 4 cm SMA lose heat very rapidly, resulting in a very limited time available for compaction, 70 degrees in 27 minutes. Small rollers are used directly behind the paver for initial compaction of the compact asphalt. They're used only in static mode in order to stabilize the thick asphalt layer before vibratory compaction. Turning the roller before changing direction behind the paver improves the surface evenness. Heavier vibratory rollers follow the small ones to achieve the required compaction. To achieve the initial friction on the stone mastic asphalt constructed here, stone chippings are rolled into the surface with the last rolling cycle. The main advantages of this process are the resulting quality and deformation resistance of the constructed carriageway and the extremely short construction period required. The result is a deformation resistant road surface without ruts or cracks. Here are some impressions from different work sites and surfaces after compaction. The main advantages of compact as